Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live on TV3. It's coming to you live from our studio here at Kanda in Accra. My name is Martin Asidu Dati. Coming up in the bulletin. Chatter House strips Shatawale and Stoneboy off their awards from the 20th VGMAs and bans them indefinitely as well. Details shortly. Heavy security presence in Manyakroba following a scuffle between residents and the police. East Regional Security Council locked up in a meeting. And on the international front, Theresa May faces pressure from her own MPs to resign after one of her senior ministers quit the cabinet. We have details of all these stories and more, including business, sports and entertainment all coming up for you in the, within the next one hour. Let's start from uh, the breaking news, which is that feuding dancehall musicians, uh, Stone Boy and Shatawale, uh, who nearly brought the 20th VGMAs to a halt, uh, have been given a, temp uh, a permanent and indefinite ban, I beg your pardon. Uh, we remember that the award which was held at the Accra uh, International Conference Center last Saturday, have both of them have been stripped uh, following the discovery and uh, the following the problems that occurred on the night. Stoneboy and Shatawale have subsequently been ordered to return with immediate effect all the awards that they picked on the night to the organizers, Chatter House Ghana Limited. The plaques they received for from the awards are asked to be, to be returned immediately. The decision was taken by the board of the award scheme on Wednesday at a news conference to announce sanctions against the two artists whose scuffle marred the beauty of the show. Also, the two artists, we are told, have been banned indefinitely from participating in all aspects of the country's foremost music award scheme. Let's now listen to what was said at that, uh, uh, that press conference. We decided at a board meeting uh, last Tuesday that there is no reason why we should let um, these uh, two gentlemen um, hold us back in our development. So the board of the 2019 Vote of Ghana Music Award deemed the actions of Shatawale and Stoneboy to have flouted the terms and conditions of the scheme, brought the name of the event into disrepute, and therefore wish to sanction the two as follows, painfully. I'm not, you know, made to give such an announcement. Also, that both musicians are hereby banned indefinitely from participating in the nominations, selections, and performances at the Vodafone, Vodafone Ghana Music Awards scheme. Also, the two artists are hereby stripped of all awards they won at the 20th VGMA <laughs> and others requested by the board to return all plaques in their possession to Charterhouse effectively immediately. Effective immediately, sorry. Furthermore, the two remaining awards announced on that night, unannounced, unannounced. unannounced at that night, sorry, that is most popular song of the year and the artist of the year, half for the, um, half for the 20th edition of the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards been nullified. The board of the VGMA is thankful to all stakeholders who helped to arrive at this aforementioned decision. So that was a breaking news that came a few minutes ago. We've been joined in studio now by Theresa Ayoade. She is the CEO of Chatter House. And then Francis Doku, he's uh, general manager for MG Digital and MG Radio, and also a member of the VGMA board. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Uh, the first concern when the news broke was, and that question I'll, I'll give to you, Mr. Um, Doku, that it is a harsh punishment, although we all know the severity of what happened. They say the sanction you have given, the total ban, is harsh. What is your take on that? Thank you so much, Martin. Um, I think that there have been a lot of um, discussions, conversations, consultations uh, by the board with various stakeholders in the industry to arrive at these decisions. 
I think the broad consultations uh, give us the, the, the insight to the fact that the incident that happened was very grievous enough to warrant the kind of, uh, if you like, sanctions that have been applied. So as far as the board is concerned and the stakeholders which were consulted are concerned, this kind of, you know, mitigate adequately and fairly and commensurate with what happened at the, at the conference center um, last Saturday. There are those who are saying that um, at least you could have uh, gotten other sanctions rather than just a blanket indefinite ban. Were there other options you could have looked at regarding the sanctions? Again, we go back to the broad consultations. I mean, this is Thursday. This incident happened early hours of uh, Sunday. And so it's taken us this long to uh, come out because we had looked at all the options that are available. And um, we think that these are the ones that perfectly fit what I think the three issues I mean I'm, I'm sure the discussion will go into that but three issues that came up uh, or the, the sanctions that have come up are that two to the gentlemen one is that they're indefinitely uh, banned from taking part in the VGMA and again I'm sure Mana Teresa will explain also that it doesn't mean that the industry or um, the Chatterhouse, who are the producers of events, have cut ties with these gentlemen. It's just that we believe that what happened at the event was grievous enough to put the, the event, the, the VGMA, into disrepute, put Ghana out there negatively, you know, the kind of stories that have gone on the BBC, Daily Mail, all over the world. And so we believe that it is good that we serve very strong uh, message that if you want to be a part of the VGMA, there are certain things that you cannot do. It's also to show that what happened was disrespectful not only to the audience there, but to the whole music industry. There are some musicians who have vested interest in, in the VGMA. They think mm. that it is the industry thing that rewards people. And so what happened kind of wasn't respectful to them. And so we believe that these sanctions are adequate enough to make it happen. Yeah. Let me bring you, Madam uh, Ayoade. The, there are those saying that if we are not going to at least have one of the uh, information is that the two categories that were not um, you know awarded we've it's been nullified for now people voted and they were not uh, they were not the only two artists in that category so someone has the, on social media commentary is why don't you give it to the person or persons that won the second position in those categories okay um to address why it hasn't been rolled over, that's what you're trying to yes. say. Well, um, in the terms and conditions of this participation in the scheme, what we have not um, captured in the current existing terms and conditions is the possibility of rolling over. So that will be inventing something new just right away, which isn't um, something we have thought through to include in. It has always been about announcing the winner of each category and the award goes to the winner of each category. Now, if the, the participants have shown disrespect to the platform, then that means they do not deserve to be um, rewarded on that platform. And that is why we are stripping them off the plaques that we're giving them on the nights. Okay. So they have shown disrespect to the platform, they have shown disrespect to their colleagues, their colleague artists, they have shown disrespect to um, the industry and to the nation of Ghana. So um, by putting up that misbehavior, you know Ghana has, Ghana is promoted worldwide as a peace-loving country, a very peaceful, that's one of our strong um, USPs, you know. So to be able to, 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 to put, to, it's off-brand, it's off-brand to put out that image of mm. Ghana. So um, that, that's what um, attracted this, this kind of sanction. But we, we do not have it in our terms and conditions to roll over. Okay. So it's about just stripping you off it and um, De declaring it null nullified, yeah. So as it stands, Ebony Rain is still the artist of the year, carried from last year. Well, for her year. So this year, it just goes on record that this year, for these reasons, these two categories were nullified. Okay. And that's it. There are questions regarding how you intend promoting the next VGMS, because mm -hmm. these are two uh, show-selling artists, mm -hmm. quote-unquote, as has been uh, being touted. Do you not foresee any impact on the brand Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Go no, forward. no, we do not see the industry is much bigger than these two artists, and let's not um, mistake that. The industry is broader, wider. There are so many 
up and coming young artists, already established artists, there's room for more to enter the industry. So let's not limit the industry to these two artists. Mm. Do not forget that um, this, is the, this is not the first time that we have distributed a ban on Shatawale. And the industry progressed and prospered without his participation in the scheme. So the scheme at, at 20 years is way bigger than these two artists. I mean, so many artists have passed through the scheme. It's like a rite of passage in, okay. in the industry. Okay. They have passed through, they've moved on, and the new ones are coming through. So it's an ongoing process, mm. and no artist is bigger than the scheme. OK. Uh, this question also goes to Chatterhouse. And uh, there are those who are saying, well, you have given a sanction to these two artists. Have you considered a sanction for yourselves, following the fact that there are blames being laid on your doorstep that the security breach could have been averted? You know, there can only be a breach um, of something that exists. Ad otherwise, it's not a breach. Okay. So um, there were adequate security arrangements put in place. I don't know if you attend events, but if you can recall any events you've attended to that you've been scanned like you're going through an airport, um, are going, are, like you're traveling internationally, mm -hmm. you understand? And even prior to 911, when we all used to travel internationally, we didn't used to go through all those scanning procedures and taking off your shoes and all mm -hmm. of those things till an incident occurred and then, which was a breach of security, and then all these measures were now put into place. So in our 20 year history, nothing like that has taken place. So whatever arrangements we put in place, we believe were adequate as has been done for all these years. Okay. So with this breach, then it's time for us to sit back and elevate the, the uh, measures that we're going to put in place. So that henceforth, if you attend an event and you see all the security apparatus and all the security measures put in place, you will comply and know that, okay, things have been stepped up to ensure okay. um, the safety of our patrons. So um, that's basically, you can only do better after an incident, as much as you try to anticipate, you cannot, uh, no event can be 100% risk free. Okay. So as you anticipate, you plug and um, block holes as they appear and then you move on. Okay, and uh, back to you, Mr. Doku. Going forward, what are the plans of the VGMs? Have, and then are there timelines as to when these uh, plugs are to be returned? Well, I mean, I think that the, the board announced today that the plug should be returned. There's no timeline put it. I mean, the board said effective immediately, which means that any time from now, from now, we expect that the gentleman will return the, the plugs to Chatterhouse as, as, as directed by the chairman of the board. Um, and we hope that they will comply to that. Um, of course, there's not much <laughs> you can do beyond that, but with the hope that because you don't, you don't own it anymore, okay. you just give it to the rightful owners, which is the organizers of the event. Um, in terms of timeline for uh, events also, I think it would also always be the same. We announce nominations, you know, we expect that people will submit their nominations, people will be uh, nominated, and then we put it out there for public to vote and then choose winner. We know that the two artists are currently in court. If there's a final decision and both artists show remorse. I would not know how to quantify the remorse, but if there are clear signs that they are remorseful of their act, how soon are they likely to be reinstated to be part of the show? I think I think about saying that something is uh, indefinite means that the, it creates room for something to happen within a short time, a long time, or any other time. For example, if the board had said that this is for five years or ten years, then it means that it was for that period. Okay. But indefinite means that there's still a room to, to have a way into, back into the scheme. I mean, while we were at the press conference this morning, we were shown some sub, uh, screenshot of Shatter saying that he's withdrawn from the VGMA. That has not been made official, but that's his. If, if that's what he's hold, is going to hold on to, mm -hmm. that it means that effectively he's taken himself out. Um, we will then consider other options available. But indefinite means that there's always the possibility of looking at what has happened, what your response to it have been, what your behavior going forward will be. And then the board, you know, uh, would look at it again. I, uh, uh, Madam Theresa, are you considering reviewing the constitution to now put in sanctions and you know, probable actions that would warrant certain sanctions. Are there those considerations? Yes, um, this incident has definitely called, called for us to review our 
code of conduct, terms of conditions, etc. And we are really we are going to work with the legal entity to be able to structure it properly so that we can take cognizance of all such actions. And also to add to what Francis has just said, um, the Ministry of the Minister for Tourism is actually setting up a, a mediation committee okay. that's going to be made up of representative of the, the board, the BJM board, Charter House, uh, Musica and other high levels um, representative re representation to be able to and and in uh, um, applying the services of a professional mediator to be able to bring these two parties together to to totally mediate and see how best we can promote unity in the industry because okay. we believe that the VGMA is um, a unifier of the industry is the one occasion where the whole industry comes together to review the work we have done as an industry and award and celebrate each other with emphasis on celebrate each other. Mm. So um, it is a symbol of unity. And so much as we have placed these sanctions on these artists, we do not hate them forever. It's just that we are upset at what happened. Okay. And we just need a bit of space from them to be able to gather, gather our thoughts and continue to push the brand. So um, I'm sure that if we are able to go through this would mediation it, Would it not be diluting, you know, because there are those who say, well, to the extent of guns coming in and weapons being brandished is taking it to the extreme. But then the spice of the, of the entertainment genre is some of these little disagreements mm -hmm. and, you know, verbal squabbles. Do no, you not think no. that wanting to bring eternal peace is going to dilute? No, no. What we are the, saying the is we are promoting healthy rivalry. Yes. It's healthy rivalry, healthy competition. In every industry, there is healthy competition. In every industry, there's competition. The banks are competing. The manufacturing companies are competing in the marketplace. There's competition everywhere. Mm. But it should not get to violence. Okay. Yes, that's what we are saying. That's what we are, the, the spirit of the VGMA is healthy competition. Okay. That's what we are saying. And VGMA is about bringing, allowing fans of music to choose their winners or their, to support, to show their support of their artists yes. and okay. it's about fans and not fanatics where we are getting to is fanatism and that's what that's we dangerous. want to avoid all right we've been speaking uh with uh, madam theresa ayoa day she's the ceo of charter house and also francis doku general manager uh media general radio and digital and uh, he's also a member of the vgma board so if you want the latest to that announcement go to our website threenews.com and be updated. Thank you very much, lady and gentlemen. Thank you very much. This is still Midday Live on TV3. Let's shift our attention to some other stories this afternoon. The Interior Minister, Ambrose Derry, has called for a cross-collaboration between the security agencies to provide adequate protection for the entire citizenry. Addressing a special meeting of all sector and regional commanders of the Ghana Immigration Service in Accra, he said the recent Burkina Faso attack should be a wake-up call. The recent terror attack in Burkina Faso has triggered a chain of events and warnings from security groups asking government within the sub-region to be vigilant. The Salafi jihadist terror groups, according to security analysts, are targeting churches and places of worship. Ghana is said to be on their radar and government is calling on the security agencies to be strategic in securing the borders. The time to call for cross-collaboration among security agencies. And I want to repeat that. The time to call for close collaboration among security services and civil society organizations and the adoption of coordinated approaches in preventing, in preventing terrorism in Ghana is now, the recent tragic incidents in Burkina Faso and the rise of terrorism in the sub region as a whole has brought to the fore our shared concern as a people and government to adapt both a short term and long term plan to deal with the impending challenge. The minister also asked citizens to volunteer information of suspicious characters to the security agencies to prevent any such attacks. We are talking of sharing information, first intra, that is the police, immigration. And so far, I can tell you that they are acting very well. We've got people who have come from Burkina Faso, first into the upper eastern part. Both police and immigration are working, and some also in the upper western part. Immigration 
rule cannot be overemphasized. The Controller General of the Ghana Immigration Service, Kwame Esuya Techi, entreated the commanders to pay particular attention to unapproved routes and come up with creative ideas to safeguard the peace of the country. Perpetrators of these crimes may in most cases try to avoid contact with the law enforcement agencies and may use unapproved routes into their country. I will encourage you to intensify patrols along the unapproved routes. Commanders, let me implore you to come out with new ideas, contributions, and suggestions for the success of this meeting. A special meeting was under the theme, strategizing to combat emerging national and sub-regional security threats. And uh, we've been joined in studio by Superintendent Michael Amwakwata. He is the head of public relations for the Ghana Immigration Service to find out really what are some of the strategies they have come up with from that meeting and how they intend to implement them. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. This has been named a special meeting of commanders uh, from uh, commanders, regional commanders and sector commanders. What are some of the strategies that have been you know, proposed to make sure that our borders are safe? Yeah, thank you. Um, it's special in the sense that uh, in recent times we've realized that there is some surge in crime and most especially some of these criminal activities are perpetrated by non ghanaians foreign nationals who are here. And as the agency of state mandated to manage our borders and also to control and monitor foreign nationals here, the Contra General deemed it fit to call for this special meeting where regional commander sectors and also heads of our intelligence enforcement and operation unit, we all came together to try to analyze the various threats that confront the service or the country. We categorize them and do our analysis. Then we try to find measures to counter such threats. And out of this special meeting, and like the Contra General said, we have proposed to enhance visibility and patrols at identified unapproved routes. Mm. And secondly, not just to be visible and patrol, but then we also intend to make this unapproved route some permanency of patrolling. So we intend to put up some structures there so that our men will be there 24-7, not that they'll go and patrol and come back to base. Okay. We, we think this will be enough deterrence for anyone who may be lacking in the bushes or river bodies or whatever. To, to, to come in. Then secondly, we want to engage the community along the border lines, what we call the uh, border residents. At times they are involved mm -hmm. in crossing people through footpaths and farm areas and all that. So we want to engage them and, and, and in a way to try to put a stop to that kind of illegal crossing. Then we are also looking at uh, increasing the number of border patrol officers that we have, especially in areas that we have identified as prone areas for this illegal crossing. So some, these are some of the measures. Some of the that, measures, okay. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it now that it is dawning on the uh, immigration service to put up posts, proper structures, as, you, uh, as you've just said, at some of the entry points? No, no. Um, um, Way back last year, um, from the second quarter to about the first quarter of this year, we 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 heightened our, our enforcement operations and also patrols along the borders. Even before this recent uh, terror alerts that came, that Burkina, Ghana, Mali, and others were to be targeted, we had increased our patrols and also had plans of uh, putting some permanent Structures patrolling there. at some of these unapproved rules that are prone to be used by, by, by miscreants. So there's something that has been ongoing and is being given impetus now that the terrorists seem to be getting closer to us. Mm. Then you also say you're going to be engaging communities along the borderline um, to, so they can detect and warn or what exactly? We, we need the cooperation of these border residents. Mm. One, for them to give us information. Okay. Because it will not be possible for us to be across all that long stretch of land. Then even beyond that, okay. within 
in town uh, on about enforcement. One of the strategies that we are coming up with very soon is to engage landlords and property owners mm. who rent out their properties to non ghanaians because okay. in, in our various operations, you realize that where we go in, you find out that these non ghanaians are operating from properties and residences that were rented out to them by Ghanaians. Okay. And then they are using these properties to engage in cyber fraud and other criminal activities that will be detrimental to the security of the country. Of the country. So, okay. yeah. We, 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 in wrapping up, there's this concern also. We know that you've been giving parliamentary approval to wield weapons. And we know the kind of threat that these terrorists, you know, pose. Sometimes they could come not just without weapons, but come attacking straight away at some of the border posts. Have your men been given those weapons? Have they been taken through adequate training? And are they prepared to fight fire with fire if we get there? Rightly so. We, our, our training is a full package. We do weapon training on, on armed combat and all that. The, even without the weapons coming in and by the nature of our training, we, we have been able to man the borders without any fear or, or apprehension to our own safety. Once we have the training and the techniques in detecting who is coming in and what he has on his body, hmm. we are working. But with the weapons, at the last graduation that we held at our training school, the, the vice president gave that assurance that the process has got into the final stage. So okay. we are hoping that very soon our officers will be armed at the borders border. to be effective in patrolling the borders. Okay. We'll have to leave it here for now. We've been speaking with uh, Superintendent Michael Amakwata. He's the head of public affairs for the Ghana Immigration Service. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Thank you for this having me. This is still Midday Live on TV3. Let's go to some other stories now. The Eastern Regional Minister, Eric Kwache Dafo, has described the act of the youth in the area as an, as an issue of pure vandalism. He has asked the security personnel to arrest all youth who are engaging in illegality. The regional security head has been briefing the media and other stakeholders after closed door meeting regarding the insecurity there. The traditional authorities have also called on illegal youth operating in the Krobo enclave to stop. The Lower Manya Krobo Municipal Assembly is uh, currently uh, under police protection, the security personnel have also positioned themselves at Somania in the Yellow Krobo municipality. The PDS has withheld its uh, disconnection exercise this morning uh, to be part of that regional security meeting. Let's now go live and listen to the public relations officer of the Manya Krobo Traditional Authority. Uh, 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 in the global land, the only affecting uh, areas, when you go to the other areas, we have up to the north, they were, some of them were also affected. Can also say that they will not pay light bill. What about if uh, people of central region, that is uh, Tekra, they will stand up today and say that uh, they have discovered oil there. And for that matter, those of them who are having a vehicle and whatnot, they will not buy fuel, and for that matter, they will suffer. Can that, uh, 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 this thing, uh, uh, good or help Ghana? No, it will not help. So, the question is, if overbilling, let us talk over, let us talk about overbilling, but don't, don't misconstrue the two, if you have a problem. The problem, if there are two, let us deal with them one after the other. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon, Martin. Uh, we are told that the RECSEC meeting has just concluded. What are some of the issues that were reached and what were the responses? Well, uh, I think this RECSEC meeting, I would call it uh, an issue of briefing and debriefing, especially taking uh, concerns of what is happening in the ground and the way forward and the measures to solve the concerns of the people and also get the PDA to take uh, its money. The reason that have been talked on the issue, he says that he thinks that the youth 
are not dealing with their concerns well. Beyond this are uh, concerns of overbilling and then delay in payment from the assemblymen to where are the meeting as well. The traditional authorities also see that some youth are officing illegally, uh, moving others to cause mayhem in this uh, disconnected answer. So they've been asking them to stop. Moving forward, the PDS has been asked to Georgia will be resident when they go in collecting their money in the disconnected answer. So these have been the issues that have been happening in the resident meeting. All right, uh, I'm sure we'll get an update in our subsequent bulletins. Yvonne Nikwe is TV3's Eastern Regional Correspondent. Time now for our MTN video report. And today, our citizen journalist Isaac Deborah highlights on constant flooding at the Ningo, at Ningo Pram Pram in the Greater Accra region. Chupuli Saglemi area. Severe flooding. This has been happening not now. In the year 2011, this occurred, but this one is more than that because we can see people have started building in our gardens and then we need the intervention of the district to come and help us so that we will be able to move the gutter beyond it. And then we can see right from this side is the affordable houses over there. And you can see all those areas have been flooded. These are also concerned citizens who are wondering what will happen in the future. We really need the intervention of the district. We can see people's farm at the beyond side of the stream over there. And then that farm has now turned into a flooded area. This is as they were reporting from Ningo Prop from District. You can also send us your video report via our WhatsApp number. It is 055 1433 This is still Media Live on TV3. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Welcome back to Midday Live on TV3. Let's do business now. 50 directors and shareholders are to face trial over alleged roles they played in the collapse of the seven banks. This follows the referral of their docket to the Attorney General's office after the conclusion of the work of a special investigative team. A special investigative team is awaiting the appropriate charges to be preferred against the directors based on the outcome of their investigations. There are reports that for one of the failed banks, more than 3.8 billion Ghana cities did not pass through the loan books. This was only identified after a special audit because the monies were reportedly distributed among the bank's directors. The receivers of the banks are also pursuing 31,000 customers of the failed banks to recover more than 10 billion Ghana cities in loans and advances. The receivers of the collapsed consolidated banks have been able to recover only 731 million Ghana cities in loan repayments. Banking consultant Dr. Richmond Echahene wants the process to be swift. We see it as the ineptitude or we are not prepared to do the right thing. It's taking such an unreasonable time for people who I'm told have been found culpable are still loitering around. Some of them are even speaking boldly to even challenge the actions of the central bank. Whoever is handling this issue must act with speed and alacrity so that we can see the end of this case. Because it's becoming an albatross on some of us who have decided to speak on it. And it is not just good sitting on the fence. I am a Ghanaian, born and bred Ghanaian. And as such, we must speak on the issues that deserve to be spoken about. The crisis saw the deposits of some 1.5 million Ghanaians affected, though the government stepped in to safeguard their monies. Protecting the depositors has so far cost the state 9.9 .9 billion Ghana cities, according to the finance minister. That's it for business on Midday Live on TV3. Let's turn our attention to some health stories now. And um, 
after four years, she has been shunned from so of social gatherings due to obstetric fistula, one of the most dehumanizing health conditions affecting women through childbirth. Her husband left her and people also made fun of her children because of her condition. Mami Onya, as we all call her for the purposes of this story, due to stigma, has finally undergone surgery to change her situation and called on such women to seek medical attention. Little did she know that a pregnancy would end her in a condition that would curtail her freedom. It all started when she was in labor and there was no one to take her to the hospital. She was later sent to the hospital but had a prolonged labor. I got help to the hospital very late when I was in labor. A week after delivery, she noticed an unusual flow of urine. A week after delivery, I noticed I was passing urine uncontrollably, so I went to the hospital. Due to lack of finance, she couldn't access medical care. I was told I had to undergo surgery, but I didn't have the money, so I came back home. For the past four years, I was living with a condition until I became sick and went to the hospital again. Obstetric fistula is one major condition affecting some two million women globally, though there is support and care for these women. Due to stigma associated with the condition, most women shy away from seeking health care, thereby compounding their conditions. Sounding emotional, she tells me, people make fun of her children due to her condition. And to make matters worse, her husband also left her. People make mockery of my children that I smell. Let's stay a while longer on this issue of fistula. And we've been joined in studio by Dr. Gabriel Ganyaglo. He is an obstetrician and also a gynecologist and a fistula surgeon. I'd want to find out how bad or serious this issue of fistula is. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Yeah, to start with, how serious is the condition fistula? Yeah, the seriousness of fistula is partly in the numbers that we continue to see and also to the extent of the hum humiliation and dehumanizing conditions that the patients go through. Currently in the country, we are seeing close to 1,300 new, new cases of fistula every year, according to our statistics. And uh, the numbers that are already existing is difficult to count. Now, you heard from the story you shared that the living children of this patient were being mocked. Mm. So these are normal children, no crime at all, but their mother has fistula and they are suffering the aftermath. Mm. The patient herself is often rejected and cannot go among human beings. They are treated at arm's length. So if you want to talk about the seriousness, the psychological trauma of the individual is a major uh, impact on her health and quality of life that you cannot begin to quantify. Is looking at how seriously you've described the seriousness of it, are there programs to help address these concerns? Yes, we, uh, the Ghana Health Service, with the support of the UNFPA, conducted the prevalence study where we actually try to estimate the burden of disease. Currently, we have a strategic program to end fistula in Ghana by 2021. So there is a document to that effect, and we have a policy brief that is to educate uh, particularly policymakers and parliamentarians on fistula. We have also engaged the media every year mm. for the past um, five or six years once the International Day to End Obstetric Fistula comes, which is 23rd of May uh, every year. So we do engage the media and try to create awareness. The challenge as we have come to find it is funding. Mm. 
Mm. It costs money to bring the patient from wherever they are as they cannot just come to hospital. Right. It costs money to treat them while they are in hospital. And even after treatment, they still suffer significant stigma. They are not easily accepted back into so, the so community. So since you started the project, uh, and it can be very brief for me, since you started the project, are people becoming more aware and are the numbers you're recording reducing? As long as we mount a campaign anywhere in this country, we find more patients. So it's difficult to tell whether they are reducing. What is this happening, though, is the new cases that keep coming up. It still presupposes that our women are still uh, delivering probably outside health facilities, and their labors are not being attended by people with skill. Mm. The key is to identify when labor is obstructed and send the patient off to a hospital for an emergency So it's section. preventable, oh, is it? Oh, very much so, very preventable. And I will always say that family planning is a very cheap and easy way to prevent fistula because once a pregnancy is prevented and the person or girl is allowed to grow well enough into adulthood, mm. it's less likely that fistula will develop. Okay. We've been speaking with uh, Dr. Gabriel Ganyaglo. He is an obstetri obstetrician, gynecologist, and a fistula surgeon at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. This is still Midday Live. <laughs> now, the management of dancehall artist Shatawale have released a statement to apologize for the altercation which marred the 20th edition of the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. The statement further noted the decision to walk uh, to the stage was not to, uh, intended as ill motive, but rather to congratulate Stoneboy in the spirit of unity. Hazal also released an apology song to that effect. Let's listen to it. The provocation, unruly behavior, the pulling out of a gun, and the total confusion that characterized the 20th VGME has been condemned by all. Many have called for the influential musicians to be made to sign a bond of good behavior. The management of Shatawale on Tuesday released a statement to apologize for the unfortunate and widely condemned altercation, claiming that he walked on stage to congratulate Stoneboy in the spirit of unity and mend no harm as perceived. Whilst repositioning to the VIP, a member of Shatawali's entourage suggested to him to join Stoneboy on his win in the spirit of unity. He agreed and asked his security team to lead him onto the stage, only to be met with confrontation instigated by Black City manager of Stoneboy. The statement read, Shatawale has officially been charged with offensive conduct conducive to breach of peace and Stoneboy has been charged with use of offensive weapon display of firearm in public and threat to harm. Meanwhile, Shatawale has released a new song, God is Alive, to thank God for his life after the VGMA brawl. So that's a song from Shatawale saying he apologizes to all Ghana. So the latest is that the two artists, Stoneboy and Shatawale, have been given an indefinite ban. That story is on our website, 3 newscom And Shatawale has also come out to say that he is quitting any activity that has to do with the Ghana for, uh, Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. That's it for the bulletin. My name is Martin Estiedudati. Thank you very much for watching. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. Good afternoon. As always, stay positive. Bye for now.